a lot of us out here yep. today. We're not polytheist, so I'd say straight away, we are monotheist. But we would say our monotheism doesn't have to be unitarian. It doesn't have to be one person, one being. We have God is able to be one being, three persons. Okay, one being. So this is what Abraham and let's not talk about Abraham. Okay, so Adam. So Adam, Adam believed what, Adam, in Adam, what Adam, you just say. Adam believed in a Trinitarian God yeah. without having the fullest revelation because the Trinity is revealed between the Testaments in the in the incarnation of the Son and the outpouring of the Spirit. So God was always Trinitarian, however the fullest revelation of that is in Jesus Christ, who is the second person of the divine Trinity, revealed himself in the outpouring of the Spirit in a Pentecost. Did Adam see God and talk with God when God created him? Yes. So he should have seen the nature of God? I, I believe when it says in Genesis 3 when it talks about God walking through the garden, I believe Jesus walked through the garden. Yeah, so let's understand something from what you are saying. So when Adam was speaking with God, had a conversation with God, he knows whether God is Trinitarian or not, right? Yes, however, I would rather stay on safer grounds. We have three chapters in the Bible and Adam is in half of the verses. We don't know a lot about Adam. No, from what we know. So from what we know, we should see clearly Adam is demonstrating a belief about God in which God is three persons. Yeah, the fence. Yeah. Sure. Too much noise in here. Okay, that's right. Hey, no. Why not? So. Adam believed in a Trinitarian God, but you have to make it clear, the Bible makes it clear that the, God with the Trinity is an intertestamental revelation about God. He was always a Trinity, but he chose in the person of Jesus and the outpouring of the Spirit to reveal himself. I'm a bit confused. Let me tell you what my confusion is. God in his essential divine nature is one being three persons in his essential divine nature this is how he was before he created everything right yeah. right so when he created Adam was his essential divine nature of one being three persons was still there right to He's begin with been, he has always right. been Trinitarian. so when Adam first saw God or interacted with God he would have seen or known God that he's God three persons three distinct persons yeah. so yeah I'm a Christian so that means my authority is this I have I have one conversation that Adam himself says mm. and this is the woman you gave me is God's sin when he's trying to justify the fact that he ate, he ate the forbidden fruit we are told nothing about what occurred before the fall of what Adam thought or said because that that is not the purpose of Adam. The purpose of Genesis 1 2 is to tell us how God created the universe, how the universe came to being, and also to explain why are we not in a perfect world anymore. And Adam, the reason why we're not a perfect world is because Adam fell and all of humanity fell in Adam. So to know about God, the very first man God created, who had the, the clearest opportunity to know how who God how God is, we have to discount him because there's nothing no. in your scripture which demonstrates the clear understanding of who God is to Adam. So let's go move, move forward to some other... Uh, Adam knew who God was. But you have nothing there demonstrating... Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image. God, God's first self-revelation... What does us mean in terms of... It's God's first self-revelation of himself. What, do, what, does, us mean, what, does, what does us mean to you? Akkad. It means the, it's the same word that is used in Deuteronomy 6, 4. You know, it's Yahweh, 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 It's the same word... Oh, God. I thought that fell there. It's the same word yeah. that's used for the Shema of Israel that is saying you. It's not a... No, no. What I, what, when you said, let us, the word us... Father, Son and Spirit. The, the us, the, the word or the le, the word us, is it restricted to Trinity or could that be more the than Hebrew, one? The Hebrew, ahad, yeah. the Hebrew ahad, the Hebrew ahad is, is, a, is a more pluralistic language. What I'm asking you, the word ahad in Hebrew, is it restrictive to a three personal being or can it be four person, five person, million person? The Hebrew is, the, so the question is not, so the Hebrew is plural, 
the no, music. Plural. I'm just, let me answer. Yeah. The Hebrew is plural, which means singular. Okay, the reason I, the reason I'm a Trinitarian is because Scripture bounds me to be a Trinitarian. No, no, that's not what we're discussing. We, we, you're no, just saying. You, you're saying. I'll tell you why. Because because I can't say to you, I'm going to base all my theology off Genesis one. No, no, two, and you, three. you're you're basing sense. as a Christian. You're, I, that's why I want to know about your differences between or similarities between Judaism. So you're saying Judaism. At that time, they believed in the Trinitarian concept of God. So we need to go back to their books to understand what they believed in and their exegetical works to see what they believed in. So I started by saying Adam, the first man of God, it seems sensible to talk about the first man God created, but you haven't anything in your accounts in Genesis, as you say, which shows that he believed in a three distinctive persons in, in one God. Now, if that wasn't the case, you then said, there is another passage in which God says, let us make man in our image, let us do this and that, That's right? Adam come from the sea. Right. So when you say let us, now I want to know whether this word us, what is this translation of, of Hebrew? It's the translation of the Hebrew word echad. No, echad means not us. Echad means one or unique or singular. It doesn't mean us. Sorry, Genesis 1-1, I think. Sorry. No, so I'm thinking Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God, the word they it's the same word that's used throughout the Bible to describe Yahweh, which is not a singular. The Genesis 1.26 is a conversation that happens. So let's talk up both this then. Let's break in John, uh, beginning of Genesis 1.1. When the word is used Elohim, does Elohim mean one God with one person? One God with two person? One God with three person? One God with five person or million person? So what does this word Elohim mean linguistically? It doesn't, it doesn't, the Hebrew doesn't have a scripture. The important thing there is the Hebrew word for God is not a singular person. When it's not singular, we need to know we're not, we're not how much. Told. So what you're doing is you're doing what, what you wouldn't do with anything else. No, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. When you say it's a Trinitarian God said, Godhead rooted in the scripture and the belief of the Old, yes, Old Testament on, Jews. Okay, based on the fact that I have the full revelation of God. Right. What is the revelation? Why does the book of Genesis need to teach the doctrine of the Trinity? But that's the claim the you make, right? The Bible teaches the doctrine of the Trinity. No, 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 very good point. No, you so are, when, when no, I no. asked you about... Sorry, sorry. I, can I, I just clarify one yeah. thing to this gentleman? Yeah, sure. What's your name? Ellie. Ellen. Ellie. 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 I'm Mansour. What's your name? Bradley. Hmm? Bradley. Bradley and Ellie. So Ellie, when I wanted to know the distinction between the concept of God in, in, in Judaism and Christianity, you said, you know, the, the, the earlier monotheistic concept of uh, Judaism, the earlier time, not of today, had the same Trinitarian understanding of God. So I want to know what is it based on? So you pointed to a scripture in Genesis. I didn't, you did. So I'm ex examining, I'm examining whether these scriptures indeed actually say that God is a Trinitarian. So the passages that you put forward for evidence and support of your claim was that let us means Trinity. So I'm now questioning whether the word us, of course, which is English. Can I, can I, can I, can I elaborate this and then you can correct me if I'm making any mistakes. The word us is not a translation of Echad. So the word us in English, we know it means more than one, but it doesn't restrict to two, three, four, five. It could be one million or one billion. Yeah. That's what us means. So it is not a proof for Trinity. That's number one. That's not, that wasn't his claim. Can I, can I, his claim is so God is a Trinity. No, 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 here's my claim. Okay. The reason I'm a Trinitarian. No, that's what I ask you. No, no, no. It's important. The reason but, I. But is that, is that what I ask you? You need to understand how I understand the Old Testament. Okay. The Old Testament is fully understood in light of the full revelation of God. So when you said, do I believe that Adam, Abraham, and all the Old Testament people believed in a. Trinitarian God. Did God reveal yeah. to that? Like, can I finish? Yeah. Trinitarian God. Yes, because God has always been Trinitarian. However, the revelation of God's full fullness is is here in this one little piece of paper between the closing of the Old Testament and the incarnation of Jesus Christ and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. What you have to understand is, as a Christian, I'm bound by the God's full revelation. And the Old Testament is pretty clear on that God is what? Pretty clear over that again. But there's a difference between one and, and no, no. Trinity, right? No. The Old Testament is pretty clear. Sorry? The Old Testament is pretty clear that uh, God is just, just one moment. One. I'll let you continue. Are you saying one and Trinity is the same? Yes, because one being three persons. Hold on, hold on. When we say one and Trinity, is that the same? Yes. So if I say one 
team, it means a team of three persons within it, right? It's not the same thing. So, here's so my now you're not saying it's not no, the same it's thing. Not the same thing so don't make a claim so which yeah, is not true. Can I, can I say this? We are not talking about someone you cannot describe the Trinity We're talking about concepts. with human language. Concepts. Fully. Okay. Concepts. So I'm saying that you have one and three at the same time. The one being of God has Someone three divine so persons. So the one being of God has three divine persons. That's what you believe, right? Being isn't it? of God. Is that what the Jewish people believed? Which Jewish people? The Jewish people today. Jewish people Jewish believed people? before Christianity. Not fully, but yes. Why? Why? If they Jesus didn't believe, himself, if Jesus they... himself says Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Is that in the Old Testament? John 8. No, this is in the New Testament. I'm talking about the concept of the Jewish people before Christianity came into the scene. So let me go back again. You talk about fullness of a revelation means it's a progressive revelation. In some sense, yes. Yeah. So did God reveal to Adam in his real essence whether he's a three personal being? And did Adam know that? You said there wasn't anything I indicative. Like, I, would, I think I can go off Genesis 126 saying yes. However, I can't point to, we don't have But I'm saying this, this information about Genesis 126 is insufficient evidence for the reason when you say about God saying us, us is not restricted to Trinity. So it could mean actually... I agree. I agree. I'm not saying it's restricted right. to Trinity. I'm saying the Bible interprets Badly. that Badly. being Try to understand how a non-Christian is trying to assess okay, the validity so, of your belief. Here's the thing. Right? Okay. So before, before you continue, I want to say, so far, you provided two examples. I'm not saying it's, the list is exhaustive. Only two examples so far in which I don't see any sufficient evidence to be convincing to anyone myself included, that the Old Testament somehow demonstrate a Trinitarian concept of God. So, so the, the reason I'm asking you is, if you claim sorry, sorry, that sorry. the Jewish people believed in a Trinitarian concept, you should be able to demonstrate from their own scripture, from their own writings, from their own traditions, from their own you know, exegetical works, that's what they believe. Do you know Maimonides? Do you know the Jewish rabbis you know, for centuries? Do you? Do you know? Which, so here's the problem. The Jewish rabbis, after the fall of the temple in 70 AD, had rejected the Messiah. They had rejected his claims about himself. So I'm talking about Messiah. I'm talking about God. The Old Testament scriptures do I believe, I believe the Messiah is God. We're not talking about Messiah. We're talking about God. No, no, There's so, a huge so, difference. So, so, I believe the Messiah is God. No, no, the huge difference is we are talking about the concept of God. If you yeah, consider can, the can. Messiah is part of that concept, yes. that's something different. Did the Jewish people believe before Christianity that was the case? They, they yes, Isaiah the 9. They, they, expect, so, no, they I, expected the Messiah to come to be called El Gabor, which is a title given to Yahweh. They expected him to be mighty God. And is this title given to other human beings besides God? Everlasting Father, Mighty God. Are any of these titles in Isaiah well, the title applicable ever... to other no, than God? Not, not the title Al Gabor. The language Mighty God might be used, but I would want to, I would want to question whether or so, not it's a, it's a God in sense of like judges in Israel in Psalm mm, 82. Okay. You have God, because Jesus interprets that about the fact that. Man is given dominion, so they have a role as made in the image of God to to look after creation, take dominion. So, what is it that you're quoting as a support to say the Messiah is going to be God? Now you're saying actually, no, it doesn't mean God. It doesn't have to mean God. No, so, I didn't say that. I didn't say it at all. I'd go to Isaiah nine. What does it say in Isaiah nine? And you sure it's not referring to someone else other than Jesus? I will read it to you. No, I'm asking you. Are you certain yeah, that it's not referring to someone else? Here's my rule. This is my authority, not my opinion. Let me I'm read it. I'm asking this. you a question. So let's read it. Gladly. Yeah. Please read. But I'm asking you because this verse yeah, has so been there. When I read it, please, then please, you'll please, understand. Please, please. It's not the first time I'm going to hear this. Yeah, I know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Are you aware that this verse has been used by the Christian people? No, for not hundred... by the Christian people, sorry. Okay, by New Testament believing people, which is part of the Old Testament text in the hands of the Jewish people. And what was the Jewish response to this claim? So are you familiar with the response by the Jewish people, their scholars, on this very text that you're going to quote me? No. Why did you not bother to check? And see whether because the response. My authority is not the Jewish. My authority. But it's their text. No. You are making exegesis of their text. No, no. 
Do you see the problem? No, it's not their text. It's not their if text. If Christianity wasn't the scene, whose, whose text was it? The, the people in covenant with God, the old covenant, which yeah. was made with the nation of Israel. How did they believe in that? What did it mean to them? Because God revealed it. Sorry, when God revealed this to them, before Christianity came, right? Before any of the New Testament authors wrote this book, what did the believers of Isaiah mean what it meant? What did they understood what it meant? That's what I'm asking. You tell me. No, I'm asking you. It's your text. I'm willing now. I don't know. You don't know. Okay, fine. No problem. Because you can go and find. Are not my authority. Uh, it's not about authority. It's just knowing a scripture that you inherited. So I'll give you another. I'll give you a before you go example. to before you go to other examples. The okay, scripture. No, no, I'll give you a modern. No, no, we want to read this. It's important that yeah, we yeah, read we'll because you this, you provided there's a proof text. Can I give you an example in the context of this? Yeah. There are Christians who have different views on the the thousand year reign of Christ. There are scholars you can read that would say it's this, and there are scholars that say this. That's not the standard. The standard here is, what does this say? And without going, oh, this person says, sorry, or this person says, let's read what it says. For to us, a child is born. Okay. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, okay. and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth forevermore the zeal of Yahweh of hosts will do this so what for do you understand a child is born so what do you understand that this means explain to me so for to us a child is born okay it means that there's going to be this is prophecy it means there's going to be a child is born who ironically it says to us a son is given, not created, given as a gift. Okay. Well, the only gift in history, the only person who claimed to be the gift of God as a son was Jesus in John 3. And then it goes, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Essentially, the governments of the world should bow down and worship this person. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor El Gabor, Mighty God. So whoever this person is, he has to be born, so he has to be... He has to enter into history, and he also has to have the, one of the divine titles of Yahweh given to him. The same Yahweh who in this book says, I won't share my glory with anyone else. So that means the individual that steps into history and is the wonderful God has, and, and is the fulfiller of this prophecy has to be Yahweh. The only person that's ever walked on this planet and claimed himself to be before Abraham was, to be the Son of Man, to be Yahweh Himself, to be God manifest in the flesh, is Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's return to this text that you are using as a support for the divinity of the Messiah, because that's what you're claiming, right? So this, this, this is the Jewish book, and we would expect the Jewish people to understand exactly what you said, but because you're saying you're not interested in the historical belief, traditionally what the Jewish people understood, their own text, Let's ignore that. Maybe they're all wrong. That's what you're telling me. Can we implicitly? What don't we have here? We don't need Jewish scholars. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's deal with what the text says. No, no, no. Says. What I'm saying, I am saying implicitly what you're saying is all of these Jewish people whose works you haven't read, but I am familiar with some of them, that you haven't read, they're all wrong in understanding their own text. I'm saying, okay, fine. Let's take that How for do the. They understand that text? It doesn't refer to any divine human being. Any divine being. Before One second. Still, please, please, please. Okay, sorry, sorry, no, sorry. No, no, just so the problem. Bradley, if they said, what's, your, what's your name? Jonathan, we are talking about before Christianity came, what did the Jewish people believe what this text is saying to them? Okay. To them, this text is not giving them some kind of understanding that it refers to God on earth, who is the Messiah, and who will have all these qualities. You will not find in their works. Okay. If you do, come and share with us, right? When you're given a prophecy that happens in the future, you don't always understand it from the get-go. Daniel, when he was given visions in the book of Daniel, was confused and sickened at the end of it because he didn't know what was going to happen. But Jonathan, one second, brother, one second. Let, let uh, Jonathan happening. speak. Yeah, yeah. But Jonathan, a text, if it says, for example, in the future there will be a man who will do this, and then you say, no, you misunderstood it. It's, it's not a man. It's a woman, but the text says it's a that's man. Not what what, what, that's not. That's not. Please, please. Give, no, 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 no. Can I? Can I? Can I just hard. respond to the point you've made? You cannot simply say the prophecy can only be understood when it's materialized, because 
the words, the text in the prophecy, we cannot just take a different meaning altogether. That's my point. So when the text says, for example, you just said, he shall be called Emmanuel. During the lifetime of Christ, who called him Emmanuel? Anyone called him Emmanuel? It doesn't say he should be called Emmanuel. What does it say? For unto to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. No. Mighty his name God. shall be called Wonderful Counselor. No, no. Mighty Go back God. to the original. Go back to the original Hebrew. His name shall be called. You're thinking of a different passage. No, 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 no. no. We can go to that passage. Yeah, I know where you are. He was called these things. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you saying this? He shall be called Emmanuel. It's not in this passage. Okay, maybe I'm mistaken. I'll get. If you can get Nazim here. We're thinking of Isaiah seven. We can go to that. Okay, in a no problem. No problem. Okay. So he shall be called El Gibor. The gov. One moment. One moment. Let's understand this text. Yeah, sure. Yes. Government on his shoulders. Did he have government? He didn't have any government on his shoulders. Jesus Christ himself has all authority in heaven and earth has been given. Look, 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 look. The Bradley, government today is upon his shoulders. Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. Liz Truss, so it's excuse me, right. Jonathan, Just Jonathan Bradley, no, no, one moment. No, what you're doing is you're Bradley, saying... don't do you know, ECGesis. I'm not doing ECGesis. Right. What you're doing so is let me, you're not allowed... Can I, can I, the text doesn't say Can I have a word in, if you don't mind? Yeah, go on. Can I have a word in? So you said, government on the shoulders means he shall be worshipped. Now, yes, and he is. Please. Government on his shoulders in Hebrew doesn't mean he should be worshipped. You just added a meaning to the text which doesn't have any uh, authority to have that meaning added into it. Okay, so you've done something totally unacceptable. What I'm saying is the government on his shoulders means he will have political authority, government, he rulership. Does. Wait, wait. He does. Can so I? The problem is, I'm Bradley. No, because because when when you are help. speaking, I will listen as much yes, as my patience allows. Yes. But I would expect the same I, to you. Yeah, so no, just what, no, because what you're going to do is you're going to say... Bradley, Bradley. No, because it'll help. Why, think, why is it difficult for you to listen to my country response? Because everything else you're going to say now won't make sense no. like this. What does government mean? I'm not saying... Tell finish. me. No, no, no. I will explain a minute. I'm not saying that Jesus, when he first came in the incarnation, fulfilled every single one of these. So he did not have the government upon his shoulders. Oh, good, fine. Stop no, there. Stop. Let me finish. No, no. When he first came, however, when he died in the place of all those who believe okay. and was resurrected on their behalf, he then came himself and said, "All authority has been given to me, in heaven and on earth." And he claims to have all authority. That is what government is. I uh, know. To have authority. With with all due respect, I I, I know you are very intelligent people. Government on someone's shoulders, if you were to go and research about this particular phrase in phraseology, you will realize it's not exactly what you're saying. It means someone will have rulership, someone will rule politically, because that's what government is. Any government, whether it's the Greek and Romans and Persians, the Byzantines, that is why, that is why... I agree, the, Jesus the, has political authority. Please, that is why critical people, critically minded people, will reject that prophecy is somehow been fulfilled by Jesus. Why? Because he never had government on his shoulders. He never ruled with whatever his rule, the law that he had, on the people. People did not give him allegiance and he ruled on that. In fact, he even went to point to Pilate and he says, my government, my kingdom is not this of this world. It's a different thing. That means he did not have government. Can I, can I finish analyzing each one and then you can respond. So he did not have government on his shoulders. He is going to be called everlasting father. What, 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 what did he say? He, he shall be called or what did he say? Uh, what does the text say? His name shall be called. His name. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. Right, his name. Now, during his lifetime and within the first 200 years of Christianity, I'm going to focus on this early Christianity. Who called him everlasting father? Would you like to quote church fathers at you? Anyone. Would you like to quote church fathers that were died before the second no. century? Who was called him everlasting father? That's what I, what I need. So did his disciple call him everlasting father? The word father there means it's more about creatorship. No, no, don't talk about now what the father means. Father doesn't mean now about brother. Father is father. Everlasting is everlasting. So who called him everlasting father? Did any of the it disciples? Paul. Okay. Paul did uh, where did... In Colossians 1, he says he created can you, all things. Can, can you show me where he called Jesus or the Messiah no, no. everlasting father? If you understand father as it means... I don't want to know what it means no, because I know what it means. Sorry, sorry. Bradley, is, you can't do you know what you're doing? Exactly what I 
alluded to earlier on. You cannot take the words of the prophecy and then say, oh, it doesn't mean father, doesn't mean father. Everlasting doesn't mean everlasting. It means potato, because which is sweet. You can't do that. So who called him? Because if it's a prophecy about someone who should be called everlasting father, we should expect someone to call him everlasting father. So who called during the lifetime of Christ that he was, the Messiah was, the everlasting father? One sec. I know of no one personally. Maybe I can learn today. Yeah, but first of all, we need to actually define. No, you don't need to define. Yes, I know what do. it means. No, no, we do. So now you're going to tell me what wonderful means, yeah? Define what is wonderful. No, I'm going to define everlasting father. No, no, no. I, I want you to define every single word within the prophecy. What does a counselor mean? What does wonderful mean? So, government means domination in we've, the We've Hebrews. dealt with that. No, no. Government means domination. Domination. Okay? Did he have government on his shoulders? Wonderful. It's actually in the Hebrew, it's Halet, which means something unusual. Jesus was very unusual. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Unusual. What's unusual about him? The man walked on water, told Lazarus to come out of the grave, claimed to be able to forgive sins, told, actually died and then rose himself from the dead. He rose himself from the Took dead. Took upon him the sins of all his people. That's an unusual thing for... Actually, Paul raised someone from the dead. How is that unusual? No, no, I didn't say he raised someone from the dead. I said he, he told Lazarus to come forth. Paul, when he raised people to the dead, used the authority of Jesus. Doesn't matter whose authority. No, no, okay. it, it does. Okay, Jesus it does matter, right? Someone else's authority. Whose authority did Jesus use to raise people from the dead? Himself. No. Wrong. Try he again. Said, he said, I, Try I again. give my life down and I can take no, it no, up no. again. Try again. Whose authority did Jesus use to do any of the miracles? Wrong, I'm telling you, try again. I'm going to give three chances so that you can rectify your mistakes. Whose authority did Jesus use to do anything? You don't accept the answer. We no, 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 no. Circle. I'm telling you you're wrong, mistaken. No. Whose authority did Jesus use to do any miracles? Whose authority? Whose power? Who gave him the power and the authority to do anything? According to the scripture. Spirit of God. Wrong. Try again. <laughs> God. No. We've had three chances. Okay, you've got three chances. Tell us. It was God. God gave him. His father is the one, according to his language. Give me a Bible verse, please. No, without looking up. What do you mean? I, I can do this one. I can tell you that in John, he says, I give him. Oh, no, no. You want a Bible verse? So, what if yes. I now look it from my own, own, own form? What's the problem? Okay. Right. Remember the kingdom. I have to look it up. And no, no, no. Tell me. In a bit. Go back up. And away. Kingdom. Yeah, go back here. Why is Bible Hub giving me about privacy? Install cookies? Okay. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Who gave him the authority? Where were we? In Matthew 28? Yeah. So who gave him the authority? Uh, in that specific text, no. that's post-resurrection. I thought you were saying he was given authority. Hang on, hang on. You just, no, here's if you someone go. gives him authority, yeah, no, it's no, not no. himself. So, no, no. Do you know what's... So here's where you are. You're in Matthew 28, mm -hmm. 18 to 20. You know how yeah. you know that? Because it's the last chapter of Matthew. Doesn't matter. Who gave him the authority? No, it does, because guess what? Okay. Before Matthew 28, he's rose from Excuse the dead, me. and he's Bradley, been crucified. If I said to you, all authority and power is given unto me, do you understand that I have it myself? Yes. Is that what you think? Yes, yes. that's the point. No, if I give wait, 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 wait. So if I give it, you a car, you have the car. Yep. Did I have the car before it was given to me? But you one second, the one second, one, one second. A car is given unto me. What's the authority Hang on. there? Before I had the car given, did I have it? That's not Jonathan, the question here. That's not the question Bradley and Jonathan. And it's not the question we're on. Excuse me. All power is given unto me. That means at one point I received power. So before I received it, it did power. I have it? It doesn't say power. Did I receive glory and authority, right? It doesn't say glory, it says authority. Authority? No problem. Before I received authority, did I have it? You asked in whose power did you do miracles? We will establish that. Before I received authority, 
Before it was given to me, did I have it? No. We are speaking English. I'm sure we all understand what we're meaning. So before I was given authority, did I, did I have it myself? For the sake of your... Not for the sake of argument. No, for, for the sake, the sake of, of... It has text. to be for the sake for of the sake of the text. you're taking it out of context. And can without I, context... Can I, can I, context can I, can I, do you understand, first of all, the text needs to be understood and then understood in the context? So let's understand what the text says. Can, can I walk you through? No. So, within the context, did Jesus have the authority before it was given to him? So can we, can we have the text? This is not the question. No, I'm asking you this simply. But it's bugging me because I would Bradley, never do this with anything else. Bradley. The Bible is not one Verse. Bradley, verse I will give you more, don't worry. But I'm asking you, when yes. I give you one verse, can in I answer, which... Can I answer by walking, it through, walking through with you? Go ahead, tell me. Okay. Did you understand my question though? Yes. Okay. Either he has it himself, or someone gave it to him. Can we, can we slowly we walk through this text? No, no. We will walk through the text. Because the verses before and after Bradley, Bradley, matter. you can establish contextually what it means. That's what I would prefer. But what I'm saying is, do you understand my point? Either he had the authority, from without the beginning, always had it, or he was given. So the reason I'm not willing, go ahead, because the Tell text me. answers, and I'm gonna go ahead. So Establish that he had the authority himself. It wasn't let's given walk to him. Slowly, go on. Tell me. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee. First of all, why eleven? Where's well, Judas has died at this point, so now they're down to eleven. Went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Mm -hmm. So they've been I'm told listening. to go somewhere because Jesus is going to give them a sign. Verse 17, when they saw him, they yep. worshipped him. So first of all, the first thing is, here are early church disciples. Here are the people that spent three years with the guy. Carry on, carry on. They worshipped him. That's important. The second thing is, but some doubted. Mm -hmm. The context here is you have some people worshipping, but you have other disciples that John tells us, it's doubting Thomas, for example. And Jesus came and said to him, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. By who? By the Father. Oh, stop. Stop, stop, stop. I don't need to go any further. You do. Because wait, wait. Sorry, Bradley, God. Bradley, please allow me to now respond to what you just said. You just answered the question that I asked. So now, what I understood from the answer is, all authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. By who? You said the Father. This is precisely what I was alluding to. So now we realize he did not have authority beforehand. No. Look, can you give authority to God? On what date was he given? Wait, wait, wait. Can you give authority to God when he is the sovereign? Can you give knowledge to God when he's all knowledgeable? Can you give power to God when he's all powerful? Can you? Can you give someone something that when he doesn't need anything, he has it already? Can you give life to someone who's already living? It makes no sense. So if Jesus was given power and authority, that means he didn't have them to begin with. He was given. The one who gives him is the one that we're talking about. So now we realize, we realize now, Jesus didn't have them. So when we go back to the questions about Isaiah 9 you talked about, we want to know who called him everlasting father. Let's go return to that. We established that he didn't have anything. He could not have raised I'm himself. I'm not letting you do that. I'm not letting you do that. Hang on. Here's the thing. What we're doing right now is... Who raised him from the dead according to the Bible? Uh, the Father, Son and Spirit. Can you show me where the verse says that? Right now, please. please. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit raised Christ from the dead. Show me. One, one, one moment, inshallah. Uh, what does it say? It says that Christ has authority over man and God has authority over Christ. Yeah. By the way, how much is all this going to make? Do we get a cut? <laughs> Is this what you think? No, no, he's joking. He's... So, yeah, let's do. Let's go to first of all. Yeah, which verse and which chapter? We're going to go to the Book of Acts. Okay, tell me where. What? What? Chapter which? Two. Acts chapter two. And what does it say in chapter two? And which verse is it? Twenty-three and twenty-four. Acts two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Right. Uh, okay. Someone yeah. No, read. Go ahead. Okay. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus uh, of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God. Which which Acts? Which chapter? Acts chapter two. Yeah. Oh, so. Chapter two, twenty-three. Twenty-two and twenty-three. Twenty-two. Big your pardon. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Yep. So I'll start again. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did for him in your midst, as you yourself know. This Jesus delivered up upon to the definitive plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. 24, God raised him up, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. So God the Father raised him. Now, what did you claim earlier? That Jesus raised himself from the dead. Just a second. Romans 8, 10 and 11. Okay, so let's go back to the, on the second, second. The third, yeah. Okay, so on this one, you said the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. What does your text say? Does your text support you? It doesn't support you. No, no, you will, I, can, I, can I do something here? Can I quote more than one verse? You can, but the quote so verse... Can I finish? So we will finish. this. Finish. So let me do all three persons first. But before you do that, can you tell okay. me what does this, this text say first of all? Does this text say so the Father, Son says, and the Holy Spirit raised no, him no, from the dead? No, no, this says that God raised him, meaning the Father in the context no, of Acts. No, no, it's not meaning. It says the word no, no, is... in the context of Acts. When, Excuse me. When the Acts uses... First text, then context. Yes. This is one thing you can learn from this discussion that we can learn. Text first, yes. context second. So I'm saying, but in the book of right. Acts, which so is the text is here, God raised him. Yes. Okay. And who gave him the power to do miracles? No, no, no. This is what we're trying to get to you. A man Matthew accredited by God Matthew to do miracles. Sorry, Matthew 28 has nothing to do with miracles. Wait, wait, wait. Here. It has to do with Sorry. reigning and ruling over the Bradley, nations. Bradley, when we talk about whatever he does, he is now stating clearly in black and white that Jesus didn't do any miracles by his own accord. It was given to him, accredited by God to do all of this. So whose authority and power? God's authority and power to do miracles, not of Jesus Christ. That is what he's saying. Okay. Not me, but your text. Right, so it doesn't say what you claim. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit raised him. Okay, let's go to your second text, which says what you claim. Or does it say what you claim? Uh, John 10. John 10, yeah, go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. What does it say? You're going to have to. <laughs> John 10 verse 18 says pretty clearly, No one takes it from me. This is Jesus speaking, okay? Okay. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up. This charge I've received from my father. So he This command said, is received from who? The father. So the father has already entrusted him on this aspect. In the to, incarnation, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Incarnation, whatever you want to contextualize. So because the problem, no, look, look, I am saying whatever you want to contextualize. There's context no contextualizing here. I'm saying I am just simply saying whichever you want to contextualize, I don't have a problem. But the answer, the fact is quite clear. By the Father. The no. Father. What did he say? I lay my life down. This command again. I received from who? Yes, he received it from the Father. From the Father. But so no, the Father that's commanded. Not the context. That's not the context. Excuse We're talking me. About who, you asked me a question. Who Bradley. raised Jesus from the dead? Yeah. I'm not answering the question of authority at the moment. I'm answering the question of who raised Jesus from the dead. So far, we have Acts saying God did it. So far, now we've got Jesus himself saying, I can do it. Hmm. And in Romans 8, the final one. Okay. Three and four, right? In Romans, yeah. so far we haven't found anything independently Jesus doing it. He's doing that because God gave him the authority. That's opinion. Not my opinion. It says in the text. No, look. The first one, God. Second one, by the Father. Am I am I adding something in here? What are you taking away? Yeah, well, the third one. Here. Okay, third one. Let's I mean, see. Go ahead. A long chapter, so I'm actually going to read it all. No, I don't want you to read it all. I no, want to summarise it. Hard. No, I don't think it's. Okay, I don't think so, you can do that. Okay, so let this me not, start in this, verse three. This then. is not the. Um, speech here. Let no, me, no. <laughs> let me start in verse three then, because it's important. For God. Give me the context. I'm not going to listen to whole of the chapter. In fact, let me read the Quran to you from beginning to end. Would you listen? Amen. Let yeah? me do this. Should we do that after that? Okay. So here is the deal then. You finish this, and I'm going to read the whole Quran from beginning to end. You're going to listen. We have to finish a whole. Would you? 
be here for a long Would you? time. So what? Well, read one chapter. We're only right. going to read one chapter. So you no, I want, one you to, I want you to tell me in context. Okay. Give me the text first, and then give me the context right, afterwards. Verse, we'll start at verse 9 then. You, however, mm. are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ, Paul interchangeably uses those there. Are you reading the text, or are you interpreting the text at the same time? Reading the text. Did he say that? What you just said, is that on the anyone text? Anyone who... If you, however, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of li is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life Mm -hmm. to your mortal bodies through his spirit dwells in you. So there we go. When I said to you, I believe, when you asked me, when you asked me who raised Jesus from the dead... Can you read that last thing again? The whole thing or...? No, no, what you just read again. Read it again. Because we may have all missed it. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Can you slowly say the, the spirit... Who's the... raising? Who's raising Jesus Christ here? If the Spirit of God. No, you're not understanding. No, I, I, I don't want to understand. You? I want to hear what no, it says. Because I said, I, I'm trying to explain to you. The reason I read these three verses out My friend, is because Bradley, I said to you. Bradley, I am not interpreting the text. I want to read the text. I want to hear it. What does the text exactly say? Who is raising Jesus Christ? The Spirit of Christ. So now this... The Spirit of Christ? Can you... Can you the Spirit of God. Because they're the sorry, sorry. Person. Where does it say again? I want to read here. Yeah, I missed it. Too much background noise. So read it again for me. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Mm. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So whose spirit is raising him? The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. The so the spirit of, the of God. So we, now you have here... Which is the reference to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is raising him. So does it say Jesus has all, own authority to raise from the dead? Have you given me an independent John verse? John 2. Jesus part. himself says, I, have the, I will lay my life down oh. and I will take it up again. Not the Father will lay it down and take it up again. He does. Did you, but, did you not finish reading by saying, this is the command I received from the Father. The Father has given him the authority to take well, and to lay down. Oh, so you're am, I, am, I, am I adding to okay. the text or are you taking okay. away from the text? So, so if I went up to my friend Johnny and said to you, go and get me water, yeah. does that mean now I am essentially giving him the power to go and get water? No. You can give a command without giving someone the power. What's happening there is God the Son was commanded on behalf of his people in the covenant of redemption to redeem them from their sins. Who commanded him? The Father. The father. So the father commanded but him, gave him the authority. The wait, wait. We, we established already. All, for, all power is given unto me. All authority and is given said, unto me. I take this before please, please, please. Said Jonathan and Bradley, if somebody makes a claim, authority, power is given unto me, yeah. you know that it's not yours to begin with. You received it. You know, I don't have to explain to you, it, it, you know, it, it's basic English. You received the power or authority. You received it because you didn't have it. If you had it, there's no point receiving it. Can Does that make back, sense? Can we go back to okay. So now, but before before because we go we back to Matthew 28, the we want, no, we now need to return to the subject matter. Who called him everlasting father? You said Paul. So where did Paul say that son is the everlasting father? So the word there for father is Abbey, which in Hebrew means ancestor, progenitor, or chief. It means first and foremost. Okay? Father, so now you're, you're going to reinterpret what Father means? No! I'm saying that the Hebrew word, the Bible wasn't written in English, just like the Quran isn't written in English. Okay? When we say God the Father, you mean he is an ancestor, right? No, I don't think it's talking about God the Father there. No, no. When I use the word Father, it's referring to Ab, the Father. When Jesus says... No. Ancestor. Context matters. Hang on. So you are going to cherry pick and in the absence of a clear information, because it's a failed prophecy, you're going to cherry pick and say, oh, by the way, the word everlasting doesn't mean everlasting, the word father doesn't mean father, you're going to apply another word. Why is it that you twist 
the clear words of the prophecy. So that means just, this prophecy... The Bible wasn't written in English. We go back to the original. Yeah, English. so what does Everlasting Father mean as a phrase? He's just as a phrase, as a phrase. Yeah, Everlasting Father? As a phrase. Am I allowed the Bible to be its own? No, 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 it's a simple thing. A father is a lovely, it's a, a loving, loving father. Mind this contact. <laughs> if it was so simple, if it was so simple, the Old Testament talks about father, isn't the same in when you and me, our, we are in a different covenant. God has personally had fatherhood. Fatherhood in the Old Testament had the attribute of creatorship. So when Isaiah says he is the ever father means creatorship. It talks about in the Old Testament. It talks about the father, and a lot of times it got it links that to the fact that he is creator. So how would that be fulfilled in the New Testament? By the Apostle Paul himself saying mm. that Jesus is the one through whom all things were created. So now we realize, Father doesn't mean Father anymore, it's just simply the Creator. Did Jesus believe in Trinity? <laughs> not the Word. It's not a mind-blowing question. No, no, no. no, no, no. I wasn't listening to it. Sorry. Did not Jesus not believe in Trinity? Not the Word. Part of it, so what do you mean not the Word? Remember, the Word is a... The word is a remember, Jesus who was on Earth, he should know and have clear understanding whether God is a Trinitarian God. In the concept no, of Jesus it's Christ, it's one second, Bradley, in the very words of Jesus Christ, who is the only true God? John 17. Now, who is the only true God according to Jesus? Uh, John 17. So you want to go there? Because, because are you, so I'm going to ask you a very simple question here. So you're going to accept John 17, 3 as authoritative, right? No, I'm asking you, this is your book. No, no, no yes, yeah, right, okay. Nothing is binding on me, it's binding on you. So I'm asking you a simple question. According to Christ, no, disagree, then. according to Christ, who is the only true God? Who do you think the only true God is before you read the scripture? Oh yeah, I'm allowed, is, is context allowed? Is... Of course, the whole, whole Bible is your context. So according to your understanding, who is the only true God? Yahweh. How many person is Yahweh? Oh, yeah. How many person is Yahweh? Three. Yahweh is three person. Okay. According to Christ, how many person is the only true God? Christ never addresses that. John Christ 17. addresses that. No, he doesn't. John 17, 3, right? Yeah. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. Hang on a minute, hang on. To the Jewish readers listening to this, that's not allowed can to you, happen. Can you read the text without interpreting it? No, because the point is, before we get to the point The point is you read the text, then you interpret. No, because... That's how it works. Sorry, you don't interpret in the middle. You read the text and say, this is what the text have is, now I will give you my interpretation. Sorry, no, no. Have you ever been to church? I would never go to that if it's like this. If no, your no, church no, no. behaves like that, I would never no, go no, to no, church. Lab, but do you know what look, they don't do? Look, let me tell you something, you Bradley. You and me are not Jews. But the, let me, let me, the very Bradley, let me tell you something. has a context. Before you make any interpretation of any text, you should tell what the text says. Okay. If you don't do that, then you're really, really someone who's very, very shaking counts, meaning the truth may be not with you. So read the text first. Father, the hour has come. Good. Glorify your son that, your son, that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority all over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have, whom you have given him, and this is eternal life that they know that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do, and now, Father, glorify glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Yeah. So. Has Jesus Christ here identified who the only true God is? Yeah. Who is he? Yahweh. How many persons? That's not what John 17 is addressing. He said, you the Father. How many persons is the Father? Three persons? One. Right. So if Jesus, look, this is not an English lesson here, no, it but I, I need to spell it out. I would expect, excuse me, Bradley, sorry, I, Bradley. I'm not willing to say Jesus would be an atheist. Bradley, it's all saying Jesus has to be an atheist. Bradley, Bradley, can I tell you what I understand from it? So when I read this text, whether it's in English or Greek, so Jesus is pointed to someone, he's saying you, the Father, they may know you. So he's not saying they may know us, they sorry. may know me. Sorry, sorry, before, no, no, no. You can be sorry, but what is, what, no, what's your problem? By the way, 
Before the world existed, there was only one being who existed and Jesus claimed to be there. Listen, this text is saying they may know you or they may know us. So, no, no, no. And verse 5, and now Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I, Jesus, had yeah. with you before the world existed. Sure. Do you want me to address that? Sure. Will. Let's go back to what Jesus says about God, first of all, and then we'll come to verse 5. So Jesus is saying to people that they, they may know you. Did he say they may know us? No, he didn't. Did he say they may know me? No, he did not. So he's referring to someone other than him. Point number one. Jesus is identifying the only true God who is other than him. That's a clear as day. Who is it identifying if it's not him? He's saying, you the Father. Right. In the Christian Trinitarian understanding, is the Father one person or three persons? One. The answer is one. So now we've identified, according to Christ, the only true God is one person, the Father. You said earlier on, Bradley, and maybe Jonathan, you have the same belief, that the only true God is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do we accept what Jesus says for the sake of like what this has been reported of him? Or will we take your words? Who has the authority to talk about God? You, Bradley and Jonathan? One second. You, Bradley and Jonathan? Or Jesus? I think critical minded people will take the words that are reported about Christ when he is reporting who the only true God is. You mean the same Jesus so who claims the same, to be Yahweh? Wait a moment. The same, yeah, Jesus, the same Jesus who claims Bradley, to be Yahweh. listen. No deflection here. I'm not deflecting. I'm Jesus saying. is saying. The only true God is the Father. If he's identifying the only true God is the Father is one person, can he be the only true God? Can Jesus be the only true God? Yes. No, he can't. Yes. Because only, only is a word of exclusion. For example, for example, in John 3.16, when God says he has what? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's gave his only begotten son or he gave one of his begotten son? His only begotten son. Right, how many begotten sons does he have? When God, your God, used this word, he gave his only... Begotten is not a term of creation. Wait, wait. When he said only begotten son, whatever the word begotten monogenes means, this word only. Do that. Does that mean you have more than one begotten son? Whichever word the begotten means. Did God give more than one begotten son or did he give only one begotten son? Only meaning only one. You have to be consistent. Christians, we know, sometimes they don't want to be consistent. And this is one example here. When you use the word only, it's a word of exclusion. If you say, you the Father is the only true God, you can't say then say, oh, he's also God. He's also God. He's also true God. Because that doesn't work. He's already excluded everyone else. No, he hasn't. And here's why. And here's why I Tell me why he's why. Because I don't like jumping verses. Can I, can I have two minutes to explain Go ahead. the entirety of the incarnation? The incarnation is that the divine son set aside his divine attributes to be the redemption of his particular people. Meaning that if you and me turn from our sins and repent and trust in Christ, he will redeem us. Here's some things, here's some presuppositions. You're assuming that Jesus, to be fully human, would be an atheist. Of course, the fully human Jesus is going to point to the Father and say, worship God. Because Jesus is not going to contradict the whole Old Testament where it says, don't worship humans. The problem is, Jesus laid aside his own things. The other thing is, Jesus claims to have all authority in heaven and earth in Matthew 28. That is post-resurrection. Before that, he says to Lazarus, come forth. He doesn't say, I'm praying to the Father. He just says, I'm praying to the Father. But here's what he says when he says that. I'm praying to the Father so that they may glorify you. Jesus was wanted to glorify the Father because as the perfect man, where I fail, where you fail, where Jonathan fails, where we all fail, to glorify God perfectly, Jesus in my place glorified the Father perfectly, pointing always to him. Because do you know what? Pride comes into a human heart with all of us. So Jesus, as my perfect sacrifice, has ensured that I, when I fail, God doesn't just throw me into hell. He didn't just cease loving me. So the context of John 17 is Jesus in the incarnation saying that eternal life is actually in the person of Jesus Christ. So interesting enough, Jesus Christ does talk about two persons there. The only true God, the Father, is true. Jesus isn't going to say, 
there is o there is only one God. Jesus was a monotheist. The difference is when he says the only true God and Jesus whom you sent. Do you know what Jesus is? Jesus is the name of a person. Jesus wasn't called Jesus when he was the eternal son. Jesus is the name he was given as an incarnational name. Mm -hmm. That is why when in John 17, 5 he says, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. The Bible is my authority. Do you know what the Bible tells me existed before the world began? God and nothing else. So hang on, if Jesus there is saying, Jesus fully knew the Old Testament, knew that only God existed. Also, he also knew that the same God that he is saying is the only true God, doesn't share his glory. So Jesus saying, give me the glory that you have. Doesn't share his glory. He doesn't. Isaiah says over and over again that... Open up the same chapter. In John 17. Carry on reading, yes. Carry on reading. To where? No, John 17, 5 you read. I'm explaining to you what John 17, 5 is saying. Jesus himself in that passage is you, saying... You, you stated earlier on, God never shares his glory. Exactly. But now we find he shares with Jesus. No, he doesn't. He's not sharing with Jesus. Jesus had the oh, glory. Oh, he had it. Okay, got it. Carry on reading. Where do you want to start? No, just carry on reading after five. I have manifested your name to the people who you gave, whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in the truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Hurry on. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name. They are one. Carry on. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the Son of Destruction, okay. that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. Can you carry on? Okay. So, you said about glory, right? So, he... God doesn't share his glory? I want to just come back to this again. Where does it go? Can I just borrow your Bible? It's probably much easier. Right. So John 17 that you read. Okay. You just stopped there just before. I didn't said you want to carry on. Sorry, no. sorry, sorry. Just I carry on. on. Just carry on. Because that's exactly the next verse. Carry on. Yeah. So carry on from where I stopped. But yeah. now I am coming to you. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just you, as I am yeah. not of the world. Mm -hmm. I do not ask that you take them out of the world. But that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so have, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they may also, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but for also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them. Stop. That they may be stop, even stop. one as Can we Can you repeat are. that again? The glory... The glory that you have given me... I have given to them. Stop. That they may be... Stop, stop. No, 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 no. Because Jesus defines what he's saying. That they may be one even as we are one. Sure. So, Jesus is now saying, someone else who is the Father gave him the glory, which he also gave to the disciples. Totally going against what you said earlier, God doesn't share it. Let me finish, then you can have a say. You said God doesn't share his glory. Now we read Jesus is saying, God gave glory to Jesus, so he just shares his glory. Doesn't share his glory. Excuse me, let me finish. Let me finish, Bradley. I gave you to read more than two minutes. I didn't interrupt. 
and I'm about to speak and you keep interrupting. At least have learned some patience. So, thank you. I was looking for you earlier on. Assalamu alaikum. So Jesus is saying, the glory that you gave me. So now we have now another instance. Jesus receives glory. If you have glory, you cannot receive glory. If you have glory to begin with, you cannot receive it. Wait, 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 wait. So he's now receiving glory. But that's not my point. My point is the same glory that he received, which makes him somehow divine according to the Christian interpretation, is the same glory that he gives to the disciples. That's what it says. The glory that I receive is the glory that I give. So now we find the disciples not only possessors of glory, but also one other thing the Christians are never consistently saying that. Jesus said, I am the Father, I one. But they never tell you the context, what it means. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. One in purpose. I don't think it's talking about. One in purpose now. But uh, so what every the... Christian believes that. Really? The Christians hang on, hang on. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Does every Christian believe it means one in purpose? In speaker's corner. No, even in speaker's corner, you'll find many Christians, they say, no, it means one in essence. Because you have read John 17, verse 20 onwards, where Jesus is talking about the disciples will be one with the Father. That would make him all divine if that interpretation was to be divine to begin with. So now we realize Christ, who himself says God has given him. So he is not someone who had everything. Yeah. His father given him. Before his father gave him anything, was he one who had it? He didn't have it. We as Muslims say, the one who gave Jesus all of this is God. But Jesus is his father. Yeah, you call him in the father, we say he's God. Right. So, so according to Jesus, who is the only true God? Jesus? His father. So that means Jesus is excluded or included. But it also means he's his father. Excuse me. Is it included? Is Jesus included? Sorry, is Jesus included? Is he relevant? It's relevant. What's so now, relevant is what you claim. So now, let's come back to. I never to said the fact the Father gives him glory is why he's divine. Fine, fine, Bradley. Well, I will ask you about what you said about incarnation. So before God incarnated into a human being, did he have all the attributes of divinity? Yes. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to Bradley. Yes. So Jesus, who is the Logos, the Word of God had all the divine attributes before incarnation. Except yes. being a father. Yeah? He was a son. Yes. What are the divine attributes which makes Sovereignty, holiness, righteousness, all-knowing, all-powerful. Good. Let's take some examples. Sovereignty. All knowledgeableness, so knowledge. Okay. They mean the same thing. No, sovereignty means being having the his authority. Is, his sovereignty is that his, please, his please. sovereign decree for I mean, the fabric of time. I mean, I don't want to disrespect you, but I have very good. I had very good English teachers when I studied in my own country. So sovereignty and having knowledge is not the same thing. No, no, no. They're linked in Christian theology. No, no. They they are linked. Yes, but they don't mean the same thing. When you say they mean the same thing, they don't mean the same thing. So perhaps you need to understand when we talk about language. For example, mercy and justice, they are linked, but they don't mean the same thing. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So let's take the example to which are linked, sovereignty and knowledge. So if God has sovereignty, that means he doesn't need to listen to anyone or compromise with anyone. He is the one who is the king, the, the, the owner of everything. His will is... Oh, that's what we mean by sovereignty. So, 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 let's understand that. You can listen to someone if you want. Why is he interrupting you badly? Right. I'm not, I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm not in control. I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. talking nonsense. Go, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Why are you interrupting like a heckler? So, Bradley. 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 So, you think that so, you can defeat somebody who doesn't know so much? Okay. He, 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 Bradley, one moment, one moment. Did you hear what he just said? He don't know so much. He knows more than you. Look at the ego. I don't know more than my brother. Then stop talking then. Let Bradley speak. One person in ignorance and think, oh, I won an ignorant battle. I don't know Hebrew. He's ignorant. I don't know Greek. I don't know Aramaic. Do you consider him ignorant? I know that I won this Okay, okay. Do you consider him ignorant or knowledgeable? I don't know my brother. So stop talking but then. Okay, fine. You are asking silly questions. So if I'm asking silly, why are you listening to me? You, you must be very silly listening to a silly person. I'm sure that your camera right. don't lie. Okay, so now we have the Trinitarian Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before incarnation, each person sovereign? Yes. Each person knowledgeable? 
each person shares the one divine essence, one will, one mind, the purpose. No, I'm talking about now about knowledge. Does each person have equal knowledge, which is all knowledgeableness, or you know what we yes. say? Yeah. But in the per in the incarnation, Jesus. I'm not talking about incarnation no, no, yet. We're not. Before we get to Matthew 24, about we're not going to any scripture. We're going to go to it. I no, Bradley, I listen. Say, I'm going to make it easy for you. We are going to talk about God before he created anything, before he incarnated okay. anything. At that point, you had the Father and the Son. Both of them are all knowledgeable. Both so of them are the, sovereign. The Father, Son and Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. So, and you know what sovereignty means? Yeah. Explain to the people again, because not many people may know what sovereignty is. I don't, I don't, I don't, no, no, okay. I, don't, I don't accept your definition. Okay, I haven't Sober defined it no, yet. No, no, no. So said, let me now define and see whether you agree. His will is law, and I don't accept that definition. Okay, so can, not arbitrary. So, so can there be any good. greater will than God's will? No. Right, so that means whatever will God has, no one can have greater will than that. that no one can overcome that. Will? So no one can will and say, oh God, Stop doing that and God says, okay, I'll stop doing that. God because God is yeah. sovereign. Right. No, no, no. So when I talk That's about wrong. sovereignty, I'm going to talk about now self-sufficiency. Right. God says himself, the psalmist prays, our God is in the heavens, he does as he pleases. Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar claims that no man can thwart God. The verses he's quoted, the problem is... I'm not listening to him. Why are you listening to him, Bradley? Bradley, why are you listening to him? Don't listen to him. I'm ignoring him. Right? So let's focus. So now, the son and the father, okay, just they have... I, I don't want to listen to you. I apologize for interrupting you. Oh, very good. And Thank I you. I was out of order. Everybody, I was out of apology order. Apology accepted. So let make sure you behave consistently like that next time. Oh, right. God bless you guys. No worries. Enjoy your game. Um, it's not a game. Truth, go to Jesus. I've got about 20 minutes and I've got to go. No problems. We, can, we have to wrap this up in 20 minutes. Okay, please. Don't, don't say, go, don't say go. he's running away because he has to go in 20 minutes. Okay? Some people might think that you're running yeah, away. Right? Tell you, it's not. Right. So good, 20 minutes and we need to wrap up inshallah, God willing. So now, is the Father self-sufficient? God in the divine being itself. Now I'm not talking about God, I'm talking about individual persons. I didn't make them distinct. I didn't make them separate. Christian theology did. The Father, Son and Spirit one, the one, one second. fully divine being. Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. You have in Christian theology, God, which comprises of three divine persons. Yes. So we need to know the, the qualities. Is the Son is self-sufficient, the Spirit is self-sufficient. Okay, good. You answered it. The Father is self-sufficient. The Son is self-sufficient. Okay. If the Father is self-sufficient, does he need the Son to make him God? No. No, he doesn't need to. So the Father can be independently God without the other two? No. Then he's not self-sufficient. It's not independent. You can't do. I'm not, because that would mean that there's... I'm going to use yourself for now. I'm not saying there's the Father, Son and Spirit. I'm saying there's the one being of God that is Father, Son and Spirit in person. You and me are one being, one person. God is one being, three persons. So the Father doesn't need the Son or the Spirit. But it's not a matter of necessity. It's a so, matter that so, God is the Father, Son and Spirit. Right, so he's independent of these two anyway. Well, when you say independent, what do you mean? They share the same will, the same mind, same purpose. They're not, not independent in the same that me and you is. Okay. Gee, like, the God himself sh shares the same mind, same purpose, things. And that one divine mind is shared co-equally and co-eternally by three divine persons. Okay, fine. If you have each of these persons with divine qualities, how much of God are they individually? But not. Each is fully God. Each is fully God. So if you're fully God, are you one God or less than one God? Not less than they are fully God. If you are fully God, are you less than one God? No. So what are you? One God or more or less? If one you are, time being three persons. One second. Let's consider the Holy Spirit. Fully God. Yes. If Holy Spirit is fully God, is that one God or half a God or a third God? Third divine person, the, the one being of God. If you are fully, if you have a full, that's one more or less. It's not a, 
you're, right, the problem is you're trying to understand us from human level. I'm not talking human level. We are humans, we can speak on a human yes, level. And what I'm saying is, but this is God, he's, uncom he's incomparable. I'm saying that the one being of God is shared fully, co-equally, co-eternally, by the three divine persons. What I'm saying is now, the Father what, is fully what God, you're so far, the Son is Bradley, fully God, and the Spirit is Bradley, fully God. Bradley, this is known in the scholarship circle called the logical problem of the Trinity. Are you familiar with it? Sure. You, are you familiar? The problem with the logical... No, no, no. Are you familiar with it? I've heard it, yeah. You've heard about it. Okay, fine. Because what you are identifying is are three gods. No. Let me, okay, let me no. tell you. Okay, let's establish that. Is the Father himself being fully God, one God, or is he less than that? As one of the divine persons, yes. No. Is he less no, no, than no, no, one I'm God? Going to use this, I'm going to keep using the language because I think it's important. Okay. I'm not talking about the one being of God here. When I'm you not say talking the about the being. I'm talking as a person, God is Father, one God. God is incomparable. When we say person, we are not thinking person in the sense okay. of you and me, human flesh. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can help you. When you are 100% something, when you're full something, you're actually one of that. I agree. Right. So the Father, if he's fully divine, it means he's one God. That's what it means. Yes. So the Father the is... The Son is fully God and the Spirit wait, is fully God. Wait, wait. Slow God. down. Slow down. So the Father is one God. We've identified that now. The Father is how much God? One God. Son likewise is one God. The Holy Spirit likewise is one God. Yes. Now tell me, if each of them are one God and one God and one God, why do you say collectively they are one and not three? Because I'm a monotheist. No, no. If, what logic are you using? What rationality are you using? Whether philosophical or otherwise, to say, this is the logical problem of Trinity we're discussing now, that one God distinct from another, which is one God, distinct from another, which is one God. Because the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Son, and so on. No. So why is it that they, each of them being one God, they're not no, no, three gods? Uh, each of them is one God. They share the one divine no, being no, no, that no. is God. As you accepted Holy earlier on, to, the no, Father is one God. You just very quickly said, each of them is, okay. each of them is it, one God. I don't, I don't it, the Father is the God from Jesus. Bradley, Jesus is Bradley. the second person of the divine trinity. Bradley, is the Father one God? He is the, the Father is fully part of the one being of God. No, yes. no. Is he one God? Yes. Right. What does it mean, one God? That he is eternal, he's always existed, that he is sovereign, all-knowing. No, no. What does it mean, powerful? one God? One. Focus on the word one. When the Father is one God, focus on the one word. Not who got one, that he that he's monotheism. There is no other God no, no. beside him. Father being one God, what do you understand by the word one God here? One. That the being of God is one. The Father is not a being, he's a person. When you say there is one, when I say the Father is one God, I mean the Father is God. The Son is God. <laughs> How much of God is he? He's not, no, he's not percentage. Fully. You he's said fully. fully. So if you're fully something, that means you're one of that something, not half of it, not quarter of it, not a millionth or a billionth or a zillionth. So now, if God the Father is divine fully, that's one God. Is that difficult to understand? No. Good. Being one God, that means He is the entirety of divinity. Well, are you saying now in they the can be... No, 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 no. Are you saying now you can have more than divinity? No. So, it's good. The so, if you have... No, no, no. You've got all that. Just, the Father is fully God. The Son is fully God. The Holy Spirit is fully God. Guess what? You and me are bound by space and time. Why are there three gods? There's not three gods. Why not? The reason why you keep saying do I have three gods... Why are not three gods? Have, no, no, you have a problem. Here's why. And I think this is important, actually. I have a problem? No, no. I think Tell me what the problem is. Because Tell the me. Quran hmm? says I worship three gods. So, you the Quran, have everyone around us, I worship look, three look, gods. Look, 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 look. Because Muhammad Logical problem the of the Trinity can be independently analyzed without going to talk about Gita or the Quran or anything else. So now don't deflect okay. into the Quran. Okay. So now, wait, wait, wait. The Bradley, 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 before you go authority. I have to trust God's self-revelation. One second, Bradley. We are talking about now logic. Yeah, God is the logic. source of logic. Logic. So now tell God me. God is the source of logic. Excuse me. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. Tell me now logic. Give me a logical syllogism or logical solution. Why are there not three but one? Because God is incorporeal. Sorry? I'm not saying there's three bodies. I'm not saying there are three time, no, no, space, no. and matter. You are beings. saying there is God, Father, Holy Spirit. Why are there not three but one? I want you to give me logically, coherently, coherently, why it's 
three gods. Because, Coherent. Because Make Yahweh, a coherent statement. Yahweh's self-revelation of himself is as Shema Yisrael Yahweh. Your scripture is not going to help when it comes Sorry, to logic. Brother, brother, I can't, I'm not going to appeal to anything outside logic. of Logic. You, you, you can't do logic without the you, triune God. You, do you know why? Because it's a logical problem there. No, I didn't say, I didn't say the triune God isn't logical. I said that unless is it logical? you start is it with logical? God. Hang on, is no, it logical? Is the triune concept of God logical? Is it logical? Is it? Is it, let me finish. Is it logical for a being who is not bound by space and time and who is unlike anything else to be able to reveal himself in three persons? Yes. So the Trinity concept is not logical, you're saying? So you, you say it's not logical, I said it's logical. Okay. So it, if it's logical, then logically follows that one God, distinct from another, one God, distinct from another, one God, is three gods. That's what no. logic tells you. No. Which logic are you using? Because I'm not saying that there's one God plus one God plus one God. I'm saying there's one person plus two persons plus three no, persons. each person is God. Yes. Don't forget. So now you have one God and one God this and one God. I wanted to start my conversation. Bradley, By defining Bradley, the Trinity. which logic are you using to say that's one God and not three? Because can I def can we go back to my very first thing I said when we were interrupted by a lot of noise? You might Bradley, we are now because discussing logical problem of the Trinity. We'll get to the logical It's called LPT. Christian scholarship are struggling to this day, which if you didn't know that, go and read about it. Go and read the scholarly journals of the scholarly journals on this. Christian scholarship are struggling to demonstrate logically, coherently about this issue because now they realize it's a logical problem. It's not coherent. How do you have logically one God the Father, one God the Son, one God the Holy Spirit and they're not three gods. Logically, they are three gods. That's every logic tells you. But you're using a logic which is not from this world. So you're not being logical. So now I want to ask you Bradley. Which logic are you using? Can I, can I do this again? I define the Trinity as we began this conversation because I think it's important. You've defined it already? No, because I think you need to listen very carefully to what Christians actually teach on this topic. Tell within, me something that I don't know yet. Go, go ahead. Within the one being, can you please get this? One being, one being, one being, one being. I know the Quran says, say what? not free. Okay, I three get what? that. Three what? Or say not Trinity if you go with more conservative, like there's a conservative translation out there that says say not free. I know that. I know why as Muslims you have to make no. make the watchers there think I worship three gods. Because your Quran, How many gods do you worship? which is written by Muhammad, oh, now you're gonna talk about misunderstood the look, Trinity look, look. because he went into a Catholic church. You said you had 20 minutes, so don't bring this up. Because now because I'm gonna said, no, show to you how you're wrong. When you're making all these claims, I can demonstrate to you you're wrong, but because you don't have time, don't bring any new issues. It's like when you have a debate, at your final stage, the closing statements you can't beat new arguments have you should know minutes. that right because you've got five minutes tell me how do you solve this logical problem of trinity because you are saying each person is one god do you believe in god hmm? do you believe in god i don't believe in three gods i believe in no, 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 one god no, no, one person I'm not sure the, the yeah question. one person one god both me and you are believers right yeah in god yeah we're not naturalists we're not skeptics right mm -hmm. okay stay over here you're demanding that God fit into human laws of logic. No, God is the one who gave us logic. If you don't accept the God's knowledge and the, what's given us about logic, then you should say all this logic that you have, because it doesn't fit with the Christian Trinity, forget all this logic, create a new logical laws and rules. Don't create new laws of logic. Eh? These laws of language, who gave us language? God. God. Who gave us logic? God. Jesus. Yeah. So why does it go against logic then? It doesn't go against logic. So yes, because now you tell me. One you person... Have a problem with the LPT. Is I don't the LPT... have a problem. No, you no. have a problem. I have a problem with the way the LPT is worded because the LPT assumes that Christians believe in three separate gods. We don't. It assumes that and then works The back. LPT doesn't assume anything. The LPT simply demonstrates logically from your formulation of your creed, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. If each of them are distinct from each other, they are gods, logically it follows that there are three gods. No. You, which logic are you using because to say it's no? Have, because the problem with saying the Father is God, the Son, is, you've, you've already got a problem there. The Father is not God? The one being of God is shared co-equally and co-eternally by three divine persons. And each of them is God. The, Son, the, the problem is... Are you the saying they're not God? Know. Okay. I'm not saying Bradley. this is what you don't have. Bradley. You don't have Jesus over Bradley. Here, the Spirit That's over Let's leave it there. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. No, because the logic to, of the, wait, I, the Trinity doesn't... 
Badly, badly. I don't want to. I don't want to really, you know, pressurize more of the logical problem. Clearly, we have five minutes. No, no, I don't know. Clearly, clearly, you know, you're not familiar with the logical problem. You need solutions to it. And that clearly, clearly needed the solutions to it because there aren't coherent solutions. Now, one final question on this very issues: Is the son dependent on the father for his existence? Incarnationally or in his divine nature? In his divine nature. No. Incarnationally, yes. So the son, son, divine. The son existed independently of the father. I don't want language to be independent. Why not? Separate. Why not? Because either the son is dependent on the father for his existence, or is independent of him. If he's, I, I let me, rather, let, me let me self-sustaining. No, no, let me use the words and see whether you are able to explain to me whether this is what it is in your belief. I know I'm dependent on God for everything, for my life and the sustenance of life. I'm not independent. I need food and water and all that thing. God created me. I need God to have created me. I'm dependent on him. The son, the Logos, he is either independent of the father or he's dependent. That's the two binary questions. He can't be anything else in between. So please if tell me. If by independent. Please, please. If by independent you mean self within himself. Self-existing and self-subsisting. Okay, yes. Right. So for his life, the but father did not. So the, the father, father did not originate him. The father did not beget him. The father did not somehow. The son did not proceed from the father. No one believes the father proceeded. No, no. The son did not proceed from the father. Session is in creation. Wait, wait, wait. Session is in creation. Let me tell you again. According to what you believe, the son did not proceed from the father, eternally or otherwise, in any shape or form. He existed by his own self, independently of the father. Is that right? Uh, yes and no, in the sense that the son is self-sufficient, but there was never a time when the father existed and the son didn't. Right, this is what I asked you. I'm is the son... You're not being very careful, you're not answering the question. If I say he's independent, you're going to go, so there are two separate... It's not about what I'm going to say. What is the reality? Either the reality is, Bradley, the son is independent of the father. If he is independent of the father, he doesn't need the father for his existence. If he needs the father for his I existence... I agree, he doesn't need, because I'm not saying it's a relationship of necessity. I am, I, saying, I am saying that the one God has existed as three divine persons. I am saying necessity doesn't if he exist, doesn't God need God. the father for his own existence, he existed by himself. That means... Not by him. No, this is the problem. There's the problem. No, this is why I didn't want to say independent. Explain, I'll explain what I mean by by himself. Doesn't mean it's no, not someone else. By himself means for his own existence, he is uncaused by anything else. By other than himself. No one caused him into existence. Not the Father, not the Holy Spirit, nothing. That's what I mean by independent. Is that true? With with covers, yes. What I'm being very careful to say yes. No, no, be care careful. So either the son, for his own existence, is caused by something, or is not caused by something. He's uncaused or caused. Which one is it? He's a, Christ has always existed. He's never, he was never caused. So he was not caused by anything other than he's himself. God. So he was not caused by the Father. The causation is enough. Both me and you would not believe causation no, 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 no. would go into God. So Bradley, so you're telling me, causation is that, which branch of Christianity you represent? Uh, why? Because I know Orthodox Christians, whether okay, they are oh, Protestants, yeah, sorry, I didn't know Protestants or Orthodox, they don't believe that Jesus is uncaused. They believe God the Father is in I'll be the. Specifically, I'm a Reformed Christian, so I believe in Solus Patro. So all even so, are great. No, no, even that, even that, they believe the Father caused the Son great, eternally. So here's what I'm not doing. So, what I'm not so, doing. I'm not to speak for all of Christianity. I don't I, 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 for, in this country, You don't have to. You don't so, have to. You, you're by yourself. I have five, I have less than five minutes. Let me get sure. this point. When you're discussing with Christians, what really bugs me is Muslims go, this Christian, this Christian. No, no, forget it. Have I have I strong on your arguments ever no, by saying another no, Christian no, believe that? I, no, no, not keep. Christian. No, no, no. I only or asked scholars. you. I don't care what scholars well, say. I only asked you. If you're not interested, forget all those Christians. You are by yourself. So on your belief, either the. Son is uncaused 
or his cost. But here are the problems in either what of you, them. When you say the sun is right, the problem is, when I say the sun, mm -hmm. I mean the divine person. That That's is, what I mean too. That is part of the triune being of God, yeah. the one triune being of God, has always existed. God is self-sufficient and therefore... No, 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 the when you say God, you mean the three collectively, but I'm talking no, about individually. Collectively, it's not a collective, it's not a group, of, it's not a meeting of is, people. Is, is God only God when the three are together? What happens to the Trinity after the crucifixion? Is God only God when they're together? You can't have a God other what than a Trinity. When they are together? Because if they're not Trinity, if there's not three th persons, that's what one God is. If you don't have Trinity, you don't have one God. One I God. Yeah. So the problem with that picture is it's not that, it's this. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Usually people draw it as a triangle, but yes. I'm not like no, no. Okay, that's tell me. I'm, so when I say that's the Trinity, I'm saying that yeah. the one being of God no. be, the contains being is, within it wait, wait. three divine persons. One second, one second, one second. Bradley. God. Here is the picture. No. The being of God. Yes, because, because, the, because the, the problem with that is my drawing's terrible. If I could draw it better, there's a better image I could use for it. I'm just not very good at it. When they are like this, individually, they can't be fully God. No. An image, no <laughs> Forget the image. That's why the problem is with no, imagery. I wasn't saying they can't be fully God. Right. What I'm saying is no to your thing. But because, because you believe the sun existed without a beginning, is it? he existed without a beginning. He existed without a beginning. Always there. If he was always what, there... What, you believe about Allah, no, 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 no. It's not I believe about God, Wait. which includes the three divine persons. No, you don't. Let me tell you why this... Di not the, in the way we describe no, how it is. No, no, the ab, the different, different. no. Different. No, no. I, I agree. So, I'm Yours not, is a logically contradictory position, which no heart and mind can be finely tuned with. Your oh, belief second, is not coherent. Second. Our belief, let me explain to you, our belief is God is one and only, unique. He's one. He's not like divided. He doesn't have other persons. That's something that you can comprehend and understand coherently. But when you have other persons added, two persons, three persons, four persons, five persons, confusion. That, that's what I'm saying. If God had four persons, would that still be one God? Bradley, if there were four persons within the... If God the, had willingly chosen to self-reveal himself as one being... No, no, not self-reveal. In his reality. If there were four persons, would that still be one that's God? Real. That's not real. You, you get it. No In reality, so, if there like were... Pagans listen, listen, or, listen, listen. Bradley, we are now using our critical mind, critical thinking. In reality, if there are four persons to one being, would that be one God? To you, there will be one God. If there were, if, if there are million persons in one being, how many gods would there be according to your logic, Christian logic? There will be one God. I come to Christian logic because the sorry basis. No, no, the doctrine is based on God's self-disclosing revelation of Himself. And if God declared not based on some guy sat fine. around trying to work out logic, God too. However, so if God revealed, you have just said something that's really important. No, no, Bradley, if God revealed, with you. no, if God revealed that he was twenty persons, wait, wait, Bradley, if God revealed that he was twenty persons in one being, would that still be one God? If he had chosen to self-disclose himself, exactly. exactly. So it doesn't matter how many persons there are, you can keep on adding. No, you can't keep on adding. God no, no. gets to limit who he is. If God, okay, so did God choose to restrict it to three, or was that compelled? He didn't choose to restrict it to three. God is three that, in divine one no, no. being. When one God, one God is the Trinity, is that by necessity or by choice? Necessity and choice don't go into it. Yes. Is God Trinity by necessity or is it by choice? Necessity and choice don't go into it. You're talking about God. I'm talking about the God person. God choose to look, be look, a Trinity. Look, look. Is a Trinity. Let me give you an example so we understand because you have to, time to go. The Son, did he choose to agree with the Father or was he compelled? To agree with the father by neither. choice or by necessity neither no you can't have neither it's either you or can. because i'm saying it's that either it was, or there was never a moment where jesus didn't agree with the father or the father agreed with jesus or the spirit agreed with jesus in eternity because all three divine persons share the one mind the one so they can't disagree the with each other there's a limitation you're saying the son cannot disagree with the father he's limited and restricted to matter, they can't they don't hang on you're saying he cannot disagree is this it's not about is this willingness to? No. 
The son doesn't want to disagree with the father. No, but is, it by, want to. is it by choice or by necessity? Necessity can't come into God. Hear my question. Either he cannot disagree with the father, it's because he doesn't want to, yeah, by choice. Wait, 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 wait. I'm running out of time. This I is know, my no. problem. Bradley, I want to get to something Bradley, important you said two minutes ago. Bradley, listen. Either the son doesn't disagree with the father because he doesn't want to by choice, or it's my necessity because he can't. Which one is it? Neither. Why is it neither? Because none of those categories can exist within God. He's not human. You exist as a necessity. You're talking about agents with will. You're talking about yes. agents with will. And they don't have three separate wills. They share the one divine no, being. They have will. distinct wills. They have distinct persons no, no, no. and they each have God. They have distinct wills. Are you saying In a sense, yes. In, uh, but in not a in a full sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Do they really have distinct will? It depends on this is getting to an area of the Trinity that we don't have time to go into. Do you even know whether they have distinct will or not? There's a there's a difference here between Eastern and Western churches on this. Your church, no, your faith. I, I'm a Protestant, so I'm a product of the Western Christian Church. There's a difference here, and there's reasons. Yeah. Can we go back to something? Because I've got like two minutes. Go ahead. Important. You said something really important there. Mm -hmm. You said no one's human mind or heart would accept this truth. I agree with you. Here's why. Because the human heart is wicked. It's sinful. We're fallen in Adam. And the only very bad impression of people. Sorry. The, I'm not bothered what people think about me or what they think about me. I'm going to say. Did something. God make you like that? God did not make me like this. I fell in Adam. Wait, wait. Did God make you wicked? Were you no, born I'm wicked? Born. Were yes. you born with bad heart? Not bad heart, an evil heart. A heart that so God evil. made you at the very no, beginning no, with fall, an evil heart. And fallen in Adam. Wait. When you were born, did God give you a clean heart or an evil heart? A wicked heart. So God gave you an evil heart, no. a wicked heart. You're not listening. I keep saying this again and again. All of humanity fell in Adam. That meant everyone so you're born. paying the price I'm not of someone else. Price. No, I'm not paying the price of Adam. Who are you paying I'm judged for my own wickedness because left to my own devices, I would choose sin and evilness how because would, my heart is wicked. How would you feel opening a bank account when you're already in debt? When you open a bank account, the balance should be zero. When God creates you, you should have no good or no bad, zero things. Then with your good deeds and bad deeds, you make what you are. You're saying, no, the moment no, you're born, you are that. already doomed. That's not just. And that's not my argument. Is that just? Is, is it just argument? to be born with someone else's sin on your That's shoulder? That's not my argument. Okay. You listen it, to my whole argument again. But is it just to be born with someone else's sin on your shoulder? I'm not saying I have someone else's sin on my shoulder. So I'm are you born? born so are you born? Sinless. No. There you go. If you're not born sinless, that means you're born because sinless. I live in a fallen world. In this fallen world, whose sin are you carrying? My own. What sin did you do before you were born? Every thought from the moment I was born. No, no. Not before now. you were born, I need to make sin a distinction. Did... I need to make a distinction. We're talking about me Badly. before I became a Christian. Before you were born, did you commit any sin? In Adam, yes. No. You, Bradley. In Adam, yes. No, Bradley. You. In Adam, yes. So you were there when Adam was there, you knew exactly no, what Adam, Adam as it's the important thing. I, I, I generally need to go, so I don't want to start a debate on this, I want to sum this up. This is what I'll say, right? The Christian belief is very simple, right? The all Has it been simple throughout? No. Oh boy, like just like the guy over there that was yelling over the top of me, please don't bring these in. I haven't brought anything, I was no, just summarizing. Like, Carry on. Because they've not been here for the full conversation. No. Okay. Have your say, then I'll have my say yes. and we'll end this conversation, right? Because you have to go. In Adam, mm -hmm. all of humanity fell. That meant that when we came to the world, we were at war, enmity with God. Adam, as my federal head in the garden, mm -hmm. fell. And therefore, God justly, as all of humanity was in Adam, has now condemned us. That leaves us with a problem. My, sim my simple heart and every thought, intention and deed is evil. I need a substitute. I need someone else. And that's where the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, before, the, before time began, chose to each take a redemptive role. The Father chose to unite the people to the Son, so that when the Son came, he lived their perfect life. He died in their place and was raised on their behalf. So that now, I have been fully declared righteousness, not based on my own righteousness, but based on the righteousness of another. And that happened because at a certain time when the Father, Son and Holy Spirit agreed, the Spirit sovereignly 
changed and transformed my heart. He took out my heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh, the desire to serve God, the desire to do His will, the wanted, wanted to know what He wants for my life. So that my standing, my peace with God is based solely on this, that in my place stands Jesus Christ, the fully perfect God-man, who bore in my place the wrath that was due to my sins and is now seated at the right hand of the Father and he has sat down because he has completed the work that the Holy has done for me. That's what I believe as a Christian. Fully right. consistent and fully logical. Um, this is at the end, you're making your st closing statement when throughout the discussion you could not substantiate anything logically. The is Excuse me. I thought you finished yeah, because sure. you have to go and now I'm, I'm finishing. Throughout our discussion, you failed, as is evident from the discussion, it's on tape, to substantiate anything logically, coherently, your belief system. Any of this belief, believe in Trinity, believe in Incarnation, believe in what Jesus about his divinity, and all of these things. This is what people can learn from it, and we can understand whether you actually made your point or not. But from my humble understanding, as I've seen that you've discussed, you have not solved anything and you have not stated anything which is meaningful, logically and coherently. Instead, you are reinstating your belief in something that is illogical, something that is unjust, something that is shows to you that yes, man should not trust on. You are saying you are born with someone else's sin that you were not responsible. When Adam and Eve did something in the Garden of Eden, they are responsible. I don't share any responsibility of the crime that they have done. It is what they have done by their own choice in the will. I wasn't even there, born. When I was born, you believe you already are guilty, doomed, unless someone dies for you and it happened to be the innocent person God chooses to sacrifice on your behalf. So you have a principle called the innocent pays for the guilty. In Islam, we have the opposite. We have the guilty pays for the crime. You are not guilty by default. You are not born sinner by default. Islam gives you the most coherent, most sensible belief system. You are born with a clean slate. You make or break what you do. So you earn good deeds or you earn bad deeds and you will judge accordingly because God is just. It is un like opening a negative bank account is unjust. You would not go and subscribe to a bank and open a bank account in which is only one million pound in debt that you'd keep on paying back. You know that's unjust. You can't believe in a system in which you are already born and you have to keep on asking someone to pay, asking someone to pay for you. So I ask you kindly, my friend, Bradley, look into the Quran, which when you read it, you will see that this is not only presenting the correct concept of God, the one and only God, which your heart and mind will accept to worship Him, but also the teachings that are embedded within it. So it was a pleasure speaking to you. Maybe Mami we can talk another time. Mansoor. Mon Mansoor. I'll pray for you, Rua. Yeah. I you pray to God to that God guides you to the truth of Islam. Okay. Take care. Have a good day. You too. I don't know. I was going to check out.
One hour thirty six minutes. Half an hour, one and a half hours. One hour forty minutes. Okay, let's go.